Welcome to Cooking with Gina. Today I just want to talk about RAW versus JPEG. Now, a lot of new photographers uh, put their memory card into their camera and the first setting that they're told to go on is shoot JPEG because RAW is a whole extra level of problems. The files are too big, you don't need to shoot RAW. And you don't if you want average files, but you're watching this uh, course now, I don't think you just want average files. What I want you to think about is what I'm telling you now, you don't need to implement this right away, but what I want you to do at the very least is shoot RAW and JPEG, store the RAW files away, and once you've learned about post-processing, you're going to love me for that you're going to want to get out your raw files and use them. The reason I insist that people shoot raw is because what happens with uh, the camera when it's shooting uh, your files as JPEGs is what it's doing is let's imagine that the files start out as a raw egg, okay? The camera then takes all the data and it passes through the camera sensor and then it goes onto the memory card. In that process, when you're shooting in JPEG, the camera actually processes that file for you. It'll add contrast, it'll add white balance, it'll sharpen it a little bit and it'll compress the whole file and what you end up getting is a compressed JPEG and so you've taken all the goodness of your raw egg and it's been compressed and it gets turned into a boiled egg basically. So that's all your data. The camera actually cooks the file for you. Hans cooks the file for you to his specifications. So it's sharpened, the contrast, the white balance is all determined by the camera. Now, it's quick, it's easy, it's fantastic to shoot in JPEG. It's recognized by uh, all the computers. You shoot, you put it on your computer, and there it is. Why would you want to shoot in RAW? The camera's doing a fantastic job of it. It looks pretty good. Well, the reason is, when you get your RAW file, there's so much more you can do with the RAW file. I can take my RAW file and, and process it the way I want to. And I can make so many different things with that raw file. I can make an omelette, I can make cake, I can make souffle, I can make pancakes, I can make blackjacks, I can make brownies, I can make all sorts of things from my raw file. I can adjust the contrast, I can change the white balance, I can sharpen it if I want to as much as I like. I can, I can retrieve highlights where there weren't any. So if, if the camera cooks a raw file and there's areas of highlight that you didn't quite get, if you've got the raw file, you've got more latitude to save them. If I've got areas of shadow in my image that I didn't quite nail in the actual exposure, I didn't quite get them, if I've got the raw file, there's so many more extra bits of data that I can draw on when I've got the raw file. So you're better off and I'm going to show you some examples of how this works in Lightroom now. So let's have a look at a, a practical example of the difference between shooting RAW and shooting in JPEG. So here's an image that I took uh, off the coast of Calabria in Italy. So uh, I was on a boat, uh, took the shot from the boat uh, and uh, it's not exposed that well. Uh, I didn't manage to get the sky very much detail in the sky. It's a bit blown out, but I did get a good exposure for the water and the, uh, the, the rock here, the coastline. So what can I do with a JPEG? Well, I can uh, 
adjust the white balance and I can do that with a, an auto setting that's warmed it up that's looking pretty good brought a little bit more detail to the clouds there I can open up my shadows a little bit bring in a bit more light into the rock face here I can increase my clarity which uh, again gives a bit a bit more contrast in the midtones now if I want to bring back some detail in the sky, I can try by maybe uh, adding a, uh, a graduated filter to the sky. Let's see what happens if I've, so I've got this white blown out sky. Let's see if I uh, drop this, what happens. Well, if there isn't anything there already, um, it's just going to go to grey because the... Uh, Lightroom can only put back what's already there and if it's blown out in the JPEG you're never going to uh, retrieve it uh, so like that's already an issue and that shows the limitation of a shooting with JPEG so if you don't get it right in camera there's only so much you can do with the image in post-production. So let's have a look at the same image shot as a RAW file. So I've got uh, pretty much all the same settings. It was uh, shot at the same time of day. I've blown the sky out um, and uh, I've got that haze going on. What I can do uh, where uh, RAW files are superior to JPEG uh, is already in the white balance settings I've got so many more options and so much more I can do uh, with the um, white balance there so I can set it to daylight uh, cloudy so if you're ever in a um, a situation where you're working with mixed lighting and you've got raw files you're going to have a much better chance at uh, improving those files if you start with a raw file so I can actually uh, take a uh, do a white balance of uh, an area of white that I find there just inside the boat and do a, a, a manual white balance there and that's uh, looking pretty good but here's where raw is fantastic so let's check out this area of sky uh, it looks like there's nothing there but it's actually all in the raw file the information is there so when I move my slider now along look what happens I'm getting picking up all this beautiful detail in the sky that looks amazing I can open up my shadows I can bring in my highlights to bring in more detail in the clouds I can also add some clarity to that I can come back now with the brush tool and I can just brush in that rock face and pick up some extra detail in there just bring it back it's all there in the file and there's so much more I can do and I can so I'm adding clarity, I'm adding a bit of um, exposure there. I can get a new brush and uh, add clarity, open shadows and bring down the highlights of the clouds. So just make them really stand out and look three dimensional. And I can also uh, just uh, bring in a bit more detail here to the middle ground. I can um, maybe add some dehaze there to the middle bring that out and I can also maybe just uh, tweak the water and bring in a bit more detail and just make the water look a bit nicer there bring really bring out the color and that's starting to look good so much more detail in this shot than you had when uh, you I can even uh, warm the clouds if I want add a bit of warmth and there you go so uh, just the, the quick demo there of all the things you can do uh, with a raw file uh, just imagine uh, all the files you've got in your archives 
that you could go now go back to uh, as uh, technology improves, post post production techniques improve. There's probably so much more you could do with them, and uh, it's well worth thinking about. At the very least, uh, change your camera settings to shoot RAW and JPEG. Store the RAW files away uh, to use at a later date because uh, the difference in what you can get it's uh, it's amazing.